Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, thank you so very much for joining me. Whether you're brand new or you've been with me since the beginning, I call you my friend. Today I am sharing 25 cards that I made in a hurry. This started on Thursday night watching TV, finished up Friday night. At the end of Friday night, I had 23 cards. I put two together on Saturday morning. First, I'll show you the cards. And then at the end, I'll talk to you about how I did these cards fast and pointers if you need to make, say, a gift pack for somebody in a hurry. In my situation, my mom said, if you have any extra happy birthdays or thank yous, I'd like them. Well, my stash was cleaned out and I'm gonna go to her house, so I wanted to get some ready. So the first thing I did was I selected paper out of my stash that I knew my mom would like. She's a quilter. She's not going to be like a doodle bug type person. Cutesy isn't her thing, but this paper has gorgeous patterns. The other thing about this paper is the colors and the values are gonna work together well. To do something fast like this, you wanna be able to mix and match your papers. And I'll show you some examples of paper pads that I would like and wouldn't like for this kind of project. Then, like I said, I'll just show you and then I'll talk you through the how later. This one is a circle die cut out of a patterned paper. And this was one of those ones that had like the pattern around the outside and then the rest of it was kind of solid. So I used this piece of paper. Some I die cut sections of the flowers and some I made some solids. Then I layered up the thank you a whole bunch. I didn't do that in other cards in this one. This was kind of at the end and I had a bunch, so I layered them. It's thick and chunky. You'll see that the basic here is a black mat and a piece of paper cut. And these are just like my simple, my beginner card tutorial. So the pieces of paper are the same size on all of them. Then happy birthday and a gorgeous pattern. So the similar idea, I had die cut some ovals out of black and I had the happy birthday. Thank you, same idea, gorgeous papers. I'm letting the papers do the work here. On this one, I have a circle die cut with a pattern, then I used black to calm it down and a white thanks on top of this gorgeous floral paper. And here, two wild patterns together, but the colors are the same, so I think it works, and then toned it down with black. I don't have scraps of paper on any of these. I'm telling you, this is speed here, people, and I have a lot of scraps. I'll show you at the end. This solid color came out of one of those pieces of paper that had the pattern around the edge and then a more neutral tone, and then a gorgeous floral, and then another layer, so same idea. Happy birthday, love this one. And I did my die cutting in advance. So it, it wasn't always that I cut it for these cards. For example, this one is a cream colored get well soon. Maybe I would have liked a white one better. Sometimes you just have to go with what you have. Nobody's gonna call my mom up and say, you know, that card would have looked better if it had a white get well soon. And I think we as crafters think people will do that. Here's the other thing. Look at this card really carefully. Do you see it? Could you live with it? There's a paper seam right there. So I took two pieces of the same paper, probably the same, laid them together, and normally I would have cut the, covered that with a strip of paper or washi or something, but these patterns were so forgiving, I didn't. I just left it. Now that's the only one where I did that, but I was trying to get her two Get Well Soon cards, and I didn't have any big pieces of paper left. So you just roll with it. Here's the other get well soon that I, I just put these together on Saturday morning quick. I put a piece of washi across here. Now I've got too much glue on here and that's barely arts and it might not be quite dry. So it'll dry a little clearer. But I put a piece of washi right there just for interest. I don't know that I needed it. That was really my only mixed up embellishment on here. And you'll notice I don't have any jewels. I don't have enamel dots. I probably won't add that. I'll probably leave these just the way they are so they all mail perfectly. This one has some gold and the die cut has stitching on it. This one's super simple. Thanks. Mm, is it silver? I think it's silver. Sometimes mirror paper doesn't reflect as well on the camera. 
thanks. I didn't love this paper, but maybe that's because I don't like pink. Of course, this was like my favorite paper, I think. This one I got fancier. This is Jess Crafts is doing those hmm, one sheet wonders and different patterns. And she had one where she used two by three strips and layered them up. And when you cut this piece of paper out of a six by six, you end up with two inch strips. So this is a way to use them. And then I mixed it up with a circle on top of it. Thanks. And this one was just like a basic rectangle. I could have matted it, but like I said, we were going fast, right? This is shimmer paper, so it adds some interest that might not show in the video. That one I might add some embellishments to. Okay, I love this paper too. So this is a birthday card, and it has this floral, and then it has these crazy triangles. But by using the mats, so you have a black mat here, a pattern, a black mat, and then a pattern, you've got a lot going on on this card, even without any embellishments. And I'm being really careful about embellishments these days because so many that I have either make a card require the hand stamped stamp, which it costs more, but you also have to give it to them at the counter. So that doesn't work for, you know, if I'm in a gift cards, I don't want people to have to do that. Or if you get too carried away, it's like $4 to mail a card. Happy Birthday has striped pattern and the gray. And then I used a lot of scraps in these. So there's a lot of old textured papers here. I'll show you that at the end and where I got all those. Happy birthday. These were from a different collection that I'm working on. And so the purple stars were just sitting around and I grabbed them. They have snowflakes on them. The shimmer paper, I had cut balloons out of scraps of shimmer paper. Some stars. I love stars, so that works. Here, that gorgeous paper and a balloon and gold. And a white balloon and gold paper. Maybe not, but for this, we're doing it. Happy birthday. Uh, this one is not centered, <laughs> but this is, we're making a bunch of cards and we're on a deadline and we've got to get them to them. We're not spending all day making one card and fussing around. I like how this one turned out. I liked those polka dots with the floral and I liked the silver shimmer paper with white paper. That was fun. Happy birthday. So she asked for happy birthday and thank you. I threw in the get well soons because I think we need some of those and she might not know that I had that sentiment. Now let me show you how these happened quickly. If you're not interested in the process or the concepts, you can just tune off and have a fabulous day. So the way I approached these was first I took this paper pad. This is a basic gray and basic gray makes fabric now. So you can't run out and buy this paper pad, but let me show you some other ones that would work just as well and why. This one would work fabulously because all of the paper is meant to work together. It's similar color tones, similar patterns. This is gonna go gorgeous with that. And if you look carefully, they've worked the colors in. So these flowers have a bit of the purpley tone on them. There's the yellowy in the background, same thing here. It's a daisy pattern, but it also has the purple in there. These things are gonna mix and match like nobody's business. This is from Wild Rose Studios, and I don't know if or where you can get it. Pebbles. Pebbles is another great example and I have a lot of fun with their pads. They have patterns in here that are gonna pull all these other colors. See how this one has this one and this one. So when you have patterns that'll pull lots of other ones, then you're fine. You might have a little trouble mixing these, so you'd have to think about that as you were putting your cards together. The other thing is the pebbles is single-sided. So you're not gonna spend any time picking a side, you just know. Honeybee is double-sided, but they have designed this paper so that they all work together. And as long as you don't spend a bunch of time dinking around and choosing a side, you'd be fine. This one, you could do the same. You just have to be careful that those you keep those patterned ones to pull your colors in. Like those would be great to die cut or do these smaller ones and then they would match with whatever background paper you wanted. This one, oh, this is gonna mix and match all day long. Look at it. You can't be afraid to put patterns together. I'm not afraid to put two or three patterns together. I have fun doing it. That's a visit from Wilson. Be quiet, buddy. Okay, this one, same thing. You could make a bunch of masculine cards and use these papers to pull in. Now, the other thing about this paper is it doesn't have, what would you call them? It has 
nice floral patterns. Like this one has nice patterns, but they don't have objects on them. They don't have teacups. They don't have typewriters, shoes, that kind of thing. Those aren't as versatile and they get strange to mix and match as much because most of them are directional. These papers were not directional. There was one, I think it might've been this one where I thought the stems were supposed to go a certain way, but then I didn't care. This is a great example. I could Okay, A, I'm hoarding it. It's a reverse confetti blue. It came out last year. I love it. I could chop this sucker up and make cards so fast you wouldn't know what hit you because what I would do is I would, if I was trying to do a similar thing like I did on these, I would cut navy for the backs. So for this layer where I mostly used black, I'd cut a whole bunch of navy. And some of these I might use, like I might use this as the background for the card. And then I would just make cards like crazy and all of these papers would go together fabulously. And the only one that's even directional is this one that has text on it. So that would make it go together. The Metropolitan Girl, this is Cardabella. A lot of this is gonna work, but you're gonna have buildings and dresses and shoes. And this is gonna get a little busy to really throw cards together and not think about it. I don't know. I have a weird thing about putting objects that have nothing, like buildings and purses. I don't know. This one, absolutely. You could mix and match. You don't have a lot of different colors in it. Think about the papers that you pick. There are some that are not, you're not going to see as many of them in my stash, so I can't grab any. Pink Paisley, Paige Evans, she makes paper pads that have things in them that do not relate as far as I'm concerned. So you can't just take the whole collection and mix and match it. You might even get color tones that just don't relate. Or sometimes you'll look at a paper pad and you'll see there's sort of two sets of color families in it. They give you like two mini collections and that's okay, but it slows you down on a process like this. So what I did was first I chopped up this pad and I ripped it apart as fast as I could. It was the kind with the glue at the top. So when the two pieces stuck together, I even left them together. I chopped them sometimes uh, two at a time. It, it was 36 pages. So maybe there were three. I was trying to get them separated and I was watching for if there were directional papers, I wanted to cut one this way and one this way. The other thing I did was these papers have like a an artistic, maybe like gel print quality to them. So I would cut the upper left hand section in one and the bottom right in another. In a paper pad like this, you're probably not going to have that as much. I had like inked edges and fading. See on these papers, oh, but the stamps are an example. If you wanted to make two cuts out of this and make them different, you could make one a horizontal down here and then your next piece, you could do a vertical up here. So those two pieces of paper wouldn't be exactly the same. These are so cute, I'd probably cut them out and use them for embellishments, but just to give you an idea, that's kind of what I was doing so that I didn't have two pieces of paper that were exactly the same if I could avoid it. And then I didn't count things. I didn't stop and think about them. I didn't lay them out like I usually do. I just chopped as fast as I could and stacked all of this layer of paper. And then some of these you'll see this was from the paper pad. So I just stacked them by size. I said, these are the backgrounds, chopped up a whole bunch of black cardstock, put those in that pile, put these. And then I sat down with my ATG, which sped this process up quickly. You could use tape runners. They don't sell this one anymore, but it's just an example for you. You could use a tape runner. You could use tape like this. The ATG is fast like the wind. So I sat down in in my reclining chair and glued these to the backgrounds just as fast as I could. Boom, 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 boom. Then I had a whole stack of these and I started decorating them. And what I did was somewhere along the way, I stopped and I did die cutting. And I have my little, my little sidekick die cutter that, you know, I'll die cut with in bed or watching TV or whatever. And I was die cutting and sometimes I put them in here. I have a whole bunch of happy birthdays I didn't use. I may have done some of the die cutting before I chose my paper. This is an odd paper out of my collection because navy doesn't look great with it. 
on one of these cards, I did use navy because I had it in my hands and I didn't hate it because there were a couple that had a bunch of blue in here, but it wasn't really great with it. So I didn't use those. I also went through this book. That's how I found the Get Well Soons and picked. My mom doesn't like a lot of really trendy kind of sentiments. You have to think about who you're giving them to. So I've got stamps that say things like, you've got this or other things like that. She doesn't want those. She wants more traditional sentiments. So I kept that in mind when I went through here. She probably doesn't want a card on it that says relax. I don't know, maybe. I had a whole bunch of stuff die cut and I didn't get crazy thinking about the circles. I didn't stop and like calculate or look. I just took the small circle, used the paper I had, took the big one, used some black, and then I glued and glued and glued. And then the next night, I stopped and looked at what pieces I needed a little bit. Like maybe I needed some lighter colored happy birthdays. I think I had to stop and cut some white thanks because some of my papers, it wasn't showing on. So I, I was trying to get those moving along. And then I just kept gluing and I didn't, I didn't overthink it. I mean, I was watching Big Bang Theory and cruising along. Now I have a pile of scraps. So this is not like a no paper left behind, use up your entire stash thing. I have more paper. And I even have a couple of, I didn't love this paper for my mom. This is a little too cutesy and I don't know, I just didn't love it for her. And then this one, I this was where I was headed, but um, see, I didn't move it over enough. So I'll probably just take a thanks and put it on there. So I do have some scraps. And then another thing I wanted to show you is my jar because I actually used my jar for this project. This jar sits on my counter or next to my die cutter. I throw stuff in it and I almost never stop to use it. And for the most part, I have a couple patterned in here, but what I put in here is cardstock. Maybe I'm gonna die cut something so I cut the edge off. Maybe I just had scraps and I'm cleaning my room. Maybe I put a bunch of something away, I don't know. I have a bag that I put my pattern strips in, like my branding strips to make scrap cards, but this is for solids. So then what I did while I was watching TV was I sat down and I took my happy birthday die and about three different thanks. You can see them in here. There we go. So happy birthday and three different and I die cut. And by then I had an idea of what papers I was going to use probably. So I went with a lot of strips of white and black and gray and the lavender and the orange. These were all random scraps that were in this jar. And I think I used a lot of them up because I think the jar was much more thick. So it's just an example to show you as far as expense, there's really not much here. Now I did have my card bases, except for these. I ran out and so I made some more horizontals, but I had my card bases ready to go. I knew that at the end of the night, I could just glue all the fronts on. That made it quicker. The ATG makes it really quick because you don't have to, when you use a roll of tape like this, you have to peel this white layer off. So it's two steps. I did that for a long time. It's totally fine. I did it today because you'll notice this is empty. Maybe reorder when you put in your second to last ATG roll because I use the entire roll Thursday and Friday nights. These cards soaked it all up. I hope that was helpful in giving you an idea. If you need to make a big batch, you could use this for Christmas cards. If you have a six by six Echo Park sitting around and you haven't made your Christmas cards, go for it. You can get them done. It's fun to approach things differently. Sometimes you want to make a giant batch of cards. Sometimes you want to use every single scrap. Sometimes you're trying to use up your stash. So you have different styles of card making for different things. And I hope that you got some ideas and inspiration out of this video and that you're taking time for crafting and relaxing. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.